जी सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम सो वी हैव मोर ऑर लेस कंक्लूजन ऑफ लेक्चर थ्री ऑफ यू एच वी थ्री यस्टे टॉकिंग अबाउट ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन विद इन द सेल पर्सनल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन from animal consciousness to human consciousness and transformation in the society that as we work on ourselves make effort for personal transformation and we work you know see our role and start working towards helping others also see this slowly there will be a tipping point where there is a transformation of the entire society it may take some time the process may be a little slow but the first thing the immediate thing that will happen with our own transformation is that we will be calm we will be comfortable we will be in harmony will be happy and with that we can also start working for the societal transformation and this is what the role of education is to try to bring about this change so yesterday there were some questions regarding what to do when family members are not listening so if we go by this approach if we work on ourselves first what's going to happen when we are transforming we are going to when we say transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness we are becoming aware of the higher activities within the self if you look at these higher activities what are these higher activities we will talk about them in length later when we talk about the self but right now for right now briefly these higher activities have to do with the activity of contemplation the activity of understanding and the activity of realization participation that i have my role in all of this existence that we are able to see with the activity of contemplation contemplation has to do with seeing our participation our role in the existence and with every other unit that means understanding has to do with understanding the harmony at every level so harmony in every cell harmony in every you know order harmony in all of nature this whole existence and the activity of realization has to do with seeing the coexistence seeing space being directly able to see the space seeing the units submerged in space and seeing how every unit is related to every other unit so essentially when we are talking about higher activities we are talking about seeing the relationship between the units understanding the harmony in the nature and seeing the coexistence between the units and if you see we have a natural acceptance for this because a reflection of this is already there in us we may not be able to clearly see it but when we refer to our natural acceptance we find we do have a natural uh, you know our natural acceptance is for relationship it is for harmony not for disharmony it is for coexistence not for struggle so this Uh, gives a very clear 
picture to us from you know a clear guidance to us through our natural acceptance and as we keep going with that these higher activities also start unfolding within us so that is the process of transformation yesterday we gave some assignment also to look at our, ourselves throughout the day and see whether we are mostly you know our focus is on the self and what is going on in the self or largely on the body and if you do this um, exercise in a little depth you will be able to get this answer it won't be you know just in one instant but you can look at various aspects during the day your interactions your activities your thoughts whatever it was that you could pay attention to uh, your thoughts on that we can share that and also are you able to see that until and unless i have some definiteness of my behavior you know when i am trying to change others in my family in my workplace in other areas of interaction that i have until and unless my behavior is definite this may not work and then we get resentful and we are disturbed we are unhappy we are in disharmony that it's not working what to do when everybody else is not listening first of all this very point that i am getting disturbed as we do the exercises we will notice that at that moment we ourselves don't have the right feeling therefore we are unhappy so we will come to that but for now if there are any sharings or questions regarding this we can take those namaskar didi good morning good morning didi uh, there were two questions first was was your focus largely on self or body for mm -hmm. that i have observed that uh, i will not say that uh, my focus was totally on self but i tried to keep focus on self mm -hmm. and and uh, you know check the state of harmony in, in each incident and event i have went to nice very nice although it got disturbed uh, many mm -hmm. times but i made effort to maintain the harmony by selecting natural acceptance uh, by checking what exactly i want okay and mm -hmm. which is not making me disturb um, and the second question like uh, whether i have made effort towards personal transformation and whether others also influence and made effort to change themselves so for this i have i would like to uh, share an uh, small incident that here yeah, um, you know in the morning yesterday morning i had little differences with my uh, younger daughter mm -hmm. and uh, in the morning and whole day i was in opposition although underlying feeling was love and affection towards her but it did not reflected in my action and word so i mm -hmm. i i was little harsh so in between my husband intervened and balanced the situation but uh, um i i i could see myself that i was in the uh, you know in my action and my instruction i was in a directive mode and i was trying to impose instruction on her Yes. Uh, as a result, uh, there was, of course, you know, a kind of disharmony, and mm -hmm. there was no communication. After even she returned back from the school, at around six p.m., I I tried to start the conversation and made my point clear, and she also understood and immediately broke the ice and started sharing what activity she did whole day in the school, and. like this we both were in disharmony earlier and after talking to each other and making each other clear uh, then the problem got resolved and the indifferences were totally resolved and we both retained our our state of harmony this nice. is what 
uh, this is what I have observed. Yeah, very nice sharing. Um, it's a very honest sharing and that's very useful for yourself and for others who may be listening. Because you'll find that, you know, it's not that we have reached somewhere. It's not that we are always in harmony. There are, there may be many times during the day that we may be getting disturbed. To be able to see what is it that is disturbing. So right now you could see that, you know, you did not have perhaps the right feeling at that moment. When you say underlying feeling of love, if you will notice, your feelings keep changing. Every moment, your feeling may be a different feeling. Just like your thoughts are moving very randomly. A lot of times, you know, you have one thought this second and the very next moment you have a very different thought. Doesn't it happen? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I see the gap that my desires were different and I was wishing for something else. That Let gap me finish. Yeah. Let me finish what I was saying. So <clears throat> if, you are, if you notice that as your thoughts keep changing, your feelings are also changing. And when you when you have a feeling of opposition, you are bound to be disturbed within. There is no way that you can be in comfort, in harmony. You can try to observe this for yourself. So, what I'm trying to get at is, at any one moment, you can either have feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition. When we say underlying feeling of relationship, what we perhaps actually want to say is that when we reflect on it later, then we are able to see that we do want the best for the child. Our intention is pure. But at the moment that we are angry, if we check our feeling, we will find that it is a feeling of opposition that is causing the problem. But no, don't take my word for it. For all of us, we can try to see this for ourselves, that the feelings keep shifting, changing. And depending on our assumptions, you know, when, when we have this, if we refer to our natural acceptance, the moment of anger, the moment of irritation, if we refer to our natural acceptance and ask ourselves that question, what is naturally acceptable to me? Feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? The answer comes very clear. And if we take guidance from there, that very moment when we have the feeling of relationship, you will notice a calm. You will notice the harmony within. And now you will realize that it's about your feeling, not so much about the other. But we keep trying to change the other because we are busy trying to work on the outside. That is, you know, going by our previous assumptions and going by what we are used to doing, looking outward. So that shift will slowly start happening like you are already sharing yeah. so thank you so much for your sharing really? thank you actually for me it is a doubt can i ask now yes yes uh, um, the, how can we explain that word universal human order because we are in natural nature, uh, uh, harmony in nature, we discuss several orders. Uh, and this human order uh, also means that the both human order are same meaning. Universal human order, how can we define that? Explain that word. Yeah. So if we see, we are talking about what we are talking about transforming from animal consciousness to human consciousness. And with that, what we are, what that means is having these, you know, uh, within us, the right understanding in the self, you know, having the right feeling within us so that 
because we understand relationships we have we do justice to all our relationships with other human beings and when we look at the physical facility part the nature part so we are participating in the larger order with nature with everything in the nature so initially we started from the individual myself right i work on myself once i start working on myself i understand relationships so when i interact with other human beings i do justice in my relationships i am able to see my relationship with other human beings and when i look at nature when i am seeing this whole nature this whole existence i see my role my participation in this and with that when i am working then you know whatever now may seem disrupted like you will notice that in nature also there is a harmony but because of human intervention so much problem has happened isn't it so it is the problem is not with the nature the problem is human being has not understood things so when the human being understands this and the human being participates in all of this right and all human beings participate in this ultimately you will have what is being referred to as universal human order definiteness of human conduct vis-a-vis -vis the nature universally does that make sense uh, ma'am ma then this human order and the uh, the uh, the human order which we refer in the uh, harmony in nature uh, slide that is there are uh, animal order human order uh, uh, so, sorry bio order uh, physical order and though that words are same mean the same yeah, you mean i mean don't worry about the words so much if you can try to get the meaning what we say if we look at you know nature when we say it is made up of four orders you don't see that physical this thing we have for our understanding what we class means order means let me finish let me finish for our own understanding for better understanding of the nature we have tried to break it up and uh, you know put it together in these four orders right for purpose of understanding for purpose of understanding the nature we have classified this into these four orders okay that's one thing the other thing is what is my role if you see okay these four you know as per our classification there are these four orders we have classified because there are differences in these units isn't it so you have you know bio order it has very specific characteristics you have you know the physical order it has very specific characteristics animal order has specific characteristics human order has specific characteristics isn't it so this classification we have done for studying now if the human being does not have definite conduct right if the human being say some human beings are living with human consciousness but many may be living with animal consciousness what's going to happen there is no definiteness in the human behavior so it is not universal can you see that we are disrupting the nature we are causing problems so when we are when we have you know when we understand nature when we understand all of this existence the way it is when we see things within ourselves for what it really is then we are able to understand not only our relationship with other human beings but also with the rest of nature 
and with that understanding we see our role our participation in the nature our behavior becomes definite and ultimately this human goal for happiness and prosperity that can become a reality that is universal human order yes ma'am thank you ma'am thank you Namaste, Didi. Namaste, Sabiko. Uh, Didi, I wanted to ask. Uh, like Didi said, when they have, she has a difference of opinion with the daughter. She justify her point. Uh, uh, it's not yesterday or uh, like three, four days back. I have a difference of opinion with my son, but uh, that time I wanted to justify, but. keeping this content in mind uh, i just uh, thought in myself that i should compliment him uh, so i am looking within a relationship with him and instead of opposition i cooperated with him whatever is his opinion i didn't do that so i just wanted to uh, clarify is what was it right or should i have justify my point we are talking about opinion opinions ideas they are at the level of thought right? yeah yeah more subtle than that is the feeling so ah, if right my, if my feeling is right mm -hmm. if i have feeling of relationship with that feeling i can suddenly yeah. discuss things with the other person i don't have to blindly agree to everything that the other person is saying i don't have to agree to their opinion you see okay yeah i can i what i will do is i will rightly evaluate myself i will rightly evaluate the other yeah with the feeling of relationship if i think that the child needs guidance the child yeah. is heading in the wrong direction then i will definitely try to put forward my opinion but i will do it with the feeling of relationship and that is where the difference comes in okay 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 the feeling is missing yeah. so we end up having a feeling of opposition and with that when we try to discuss something it becomes mm -hmm. more of an argument and then it doesn't work Ah, so right. not have to agree to the other person or disagree with the other person it's more about hmm. what is my feeling with that right feeling with concern for the other now i participate okay. i see how i can help the other okay okay yeah that's right yeah thank you thank you diti thank you yes hi namaste diti namaste uh, namaste sabhi ko Maybe I regarding that question that we you know, reflected yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to share that yes, I, now that I am aware, so it's not that the entire day my you know, I am aware of my body or self only. It's it's like on and off. Sometimes I'm aware of my body, sometimes of myself. But one thought that you know often comes to my mind is that why the other. See, I am observing myself, mm -hmm. but I feel that the other. This thought comes to me often that the other should also, you know, listen to this content, and the other should also understand. He should also have the right understanding. So, how to handle this thought, which is coming again and again? <laughs> When I am seeing myself, I am seeing that okay, I am having this, this, this problem, and I should work on this. Mm -hmm. And I am able to see that the other. you know the other person is incompetent i am able to see that he is incompetent mm -hmm. but he is not ready to accept that he is incompetent i am trying to you know balance create a balance over there but this thought you know comes to my mind often that why the other is not doing this so how to handle this thought didi yeah so if you look you know we are all at different levels of evolution if you look at the cell right and you are you know getting this information therefore you are reflecting on yourself therefore you are looking at yourself right therefore you are able to make this 
um, you know, have this opinion about the other that he lacks competence, isn't it? But the other may not be doing all that. The other may not be aware of all this. Is it? Now, if he lacks competence, my first and foremost thing to see is, am I getting disturbed by this? And I think you are because that's your question. Yes, right? yes. yes what do you do about it? So why am I getting disturbed? Is it perhaps because I am doubting the intention somewhere? No, or am no. I really, if, if I'm very clear that it is just a lack of competence, and if I think that I have more competence, then I should just try to help the other. Help the other as in, see my participation, my role in that interaction, in that, you know, whatever, uh, in my participation will be my focus rather than why the other is not changing. You will find that there are many things for us also. We may have many assumptions based on which we also have conduct which is, you know, not really in line with what is naturally acceptable. Can I, so, sorry to interrupt you. Can I share an incident? Yeah, okay. Actually, I have, uh, there is a one folder that I have created on Drive, EC Department Resources. So everything, the scheme, syllabus, list of students, academic calendar, list of all, everything, whatever is required, it is there. And that folder is shared with all concerned people. Everybody knows that this, there is this folder. But one person, you know, he often calls me, Adam, can you please share the scheme? And I tell him, sir, it is there on that folder. I have shared it with you. Oh, I could not find it. So please, please, ma'am, it will take only a moment for you to just, you know, send WhatsApp, send it through WhatsApp. So many times I do send, but many times I am like, no, you, if you please log in and then you will find everything there. So this happens often. So, so this thing I am trying to handle. Yeah. So please, please help now, me. Here also, if you see, you, know, you can sit down and ask that person one time, what exactly is the problem? See, I have, I do think everybody else is able to take the time. Is there an issue? Maybe it is something simple like having some difficulty with that thing. Maybe it's just that he's you know, looking at him last minute and when he's in a rush. So this is the easiest way possible to do it. But whatever may be the case, his intention is pure. It's not that he is trying to disrupt you, disturb you. Is that clear? Is that part clear to us? Yes, hmm? yes Didi. I think the intention is clear. I mean, I yeah. don't find so the intention have, wrong. Yeah. We may be doubting that from time to time. When it happens once, twice, then we think, okay, now, you know, high time. We should know this by now. And when he again makes that mistake, somewhere we may be doubting the intention. But if we see that his desire may not be matching, at that moment, his desire may not be matching his natural acceptance. Isn't it? We, we also are not always referring to our natural acceptance. Somewhere we are getting disturbed means our feeling is not right. So as we do the exercises in more depth, we'll be able to see that when, when such instances happen, these are like um, uh, signals for us to check our feeling at that moment. And you will find that our feeling may not be right. With the right feeling, if we have the right feeling, now we will have concern for the other and we will find a way. We will discuss with that person. We will ask them what is exactly is the problem, why you are not able to, everybody else is doing it. See, so many times I have shown you. But we don't do all that because somewhere our feeling is not right and we are getting agitated and irritated with this. And 
therefore we are not able to discuss with the other person because we feel it's better to at least not bring out the opposition in, in the action so we try to control in our activity but inside we are uncomfortable you may want to look at that just keep it open i would say ji 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 reflect on that little bit and see yeah okay okay didi thank you didi thank you in the last lecture we talked about uh, we did a brief recap of our basic aspiration for happiness and prosperity and how that shift can happen from inhuman or animal consciousness to human consciousness and moving from personal transformation to societal transformation in this lecture we are going to recap a little bit about the human being and about this existence so in this you know like i said we already discussed human being in the uhv2 lectures but here we will look at it in a little more depth we will look at the activities within the human being also in a little more depth and we will also see you know what what is our understanding of the existence and our role so with this session with this lecture most important thing that we are going to try to see is first of all to understand the human being that recap we'll do briefly about the self and the body and then with that how you know when we say harmony in in the human being how we are able to keep that harmony and how it reflects in our conduct so for that like we already discussed to be in that state of harmony we need to have at least to be in that harmony in continuity we need to have right understanding in its completeness with that we understand the relationships so we have right feelings in the self and then we can be in harmony and we'll find that that is what is significant for us right now we may be busy trying to change things outside but really what is significant what is important for us at some point we will see is that which is of paramount importance is to me is harmony within myself so for that when we say we need right and we need to have the right understanding within ourselves we need to have the right feeling in the self now you can see that the problem the disharmony was in the self the resolution is to have this right understanding and right feeling right thought within the self and ultimately when we do that there is harmony within the self so if you see that for my you know if i look at my existence as a human being then as a human being it is the self that is significant for me self is important self is central this uh, conclusion we may be able to see and we will discuss that further in the next lecture so i think this everybody is quite familiar with this slide having been through earlier workshops introductory workshops so we have been saying throughout it's a proposal that the human being is a coexistence of self and body i am not just the body i am a coexistence of self and body and these are two distinct entities distinct units and we talk about the distinctness on the basis of the needs the activities and the response so if you look at the needs 
So if you look at the needs, the need of the self, we can see, is continuous. I want to be happy, and I don't want to be happy just one moment, two moments. I want to be happy all the time. So even for one moment, if I am disturbed, if I am unhappy, I am, you know, it's not acceptable to me because I want to be happy in continuity. You can see that. This need of the self for happiness, it is a qualitative need, not just that it is continuous, it is also qualitative. It has to do with feelings. So, you know, you can have a feeling that is naturally acceptable, you can be happy, or you may have a feeling at, the, at any moment that is not naturally acceptable and you become unhappy. So it is qualitative. You can't really quantify this feeling. You can't say a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's either this or that. At any one moment, you will have either a feeling in line with the natural acceptance or not in line. It can't be both. And when we see, you know, how this need for happiness within myself is fulfilled, we find it is with right understanding and right feeling in the self. When I have the right understanding, with that I understand relationships. So with that, I have the right feeling within myself. When I have the right feeling within myself, I feel happy. So my need for happiness is fulfilled by this right understanding and right feeling within myself. Coming to the body, the body's need is for physical facility. And we can see very clearly that it's a very temporary need. It's not like we have to keep eating all the time. It's a um, quantitative need. We can quantify it. We can measure it. So like we give that example of you know, how much food you eat, you can quantify that. You can decide, okay, in, you know, um, you say somebody eats two chapatis, another person eats four chapatis, somebody eats six chapatis, but nobody can eat you know, continue eating innumerable chapatis. That cannot happen. You can see that it is quantifiable. You can measure it. And you can also see that there is some cap to it. It is required in some limited quantity. You cannot just say that indefinite number of chapatis can be eaten by somebody. Not possible. So it is something that is in some limited quantity it is required. And when you go to fulfill this need of the body, you find that it is fulfilled by physiochemical things. Coming to the activities, you see the activities also are quite different between the self and the body. If we look at you know, the, our imagination that is going on within ourselves, these are activities that are going on within myself. I have some desires, they are associated with some feeling. I have thoughts, I have expectations. These are going on within me. And they are going on continuously. At no time am I devoid of these. At no time do I get tired of, or you know, because I am tired, I stop thinking, that doesn't happen. But if you look at the body, the activities in the body, they are, um, you know, you need uh, a break from time to time. So if you're eating, you're walking, whatever you may be doing using the body, at some point you need to give it a break. You need to give it rest. You cannot continue 
so while in the self these activities desire thought expectation you can't stop it even if you want to they seem to just continue if you try to say you know i want to stop thinking that is also a thought so it doesn't work and you will see that a flood of thoughts keeps coming in the case of the body you try to continue it you know without a break that also you can see is not possible at some point the body needs to be given rest so you need to break that activity give it rest then it's like your recharge the body can be put back into the activity you can see this also as a very big difference and the third thing that is very different between the self and the body is that in the case of the body the response of the body is one of recognizing and fulfilling so just to briefly go over what is recognizing and pulling fulfilling you can say that the body recognizes its relationship with any other unit and fulfills that relationship in a very definite manner these are terms that we are using but it is important to see like that example we keep giving about the needle so if a needle you know which is hard you poke it in the skin it pierces the skin what has happened here the body recognizes the relationship with the needle this interaction is definite the fulfillment is definite recognition and fulfillment is definite the needle as long as it is harder than the skin it is sharp it is pointed it will pierce the skin if it is not then it will not pierce if it is soft it will not pierce the skin so this uh, response is very definite when it comes to the self it is not so simple it becomes more complicated because now in the self the recognition and fulfillment is based on whether i am assuming something without knowing or whether i have assumed or accepted something about the reality with knowing so in the same example continuing the same example that you keep giving now the needle will either poke the body it will either pierce the body the skin or it will not based on you know the nature of the, you know how the needle is whether it is um hard or soft in the case of the uh, self now if i assume that this is going to be useful for the body then i am for it so my recognition and fulfillment becomes um colored by or it becomes um is driven by my assumption that this is good for the body so if an injection is being given by a doctor i allow it to happen in either way the needle will pierce the skin because the body's recognition and fulfillment is very definite but here my assumption is this is good for the body so i allow it to happen now if my assumption is something different that this person is my enemy this person is trying to harm me then what's going to happen my recognition and fulfillment changes i am now i will do whatever possible so that this person is not able to pierce that needle but if he does again same thing will apply the needle that is hard will pierce the needle that is soft will not pierce so again the body's recognition fulfillment is definite but my assumption has changed so you'll find that this is happening with us throughout if i assume the other person 
i have a relationship with that person my recognition and fulfillment with that person is one way if i assume there is no relationship with that person now my recognition and fulfillment with that person is different i behave a different way so my recognition and fulfillment may keep changing whenever my assumption changes this can be fixed only when it comes to knowing so when i have you know um when i see things the way they are when i know when i understand the reality the way it is now there can be some definiteness because now i accept things the way they are now my recognition and fulfillment can be definite so if i am able to see my relationship with each and every unit in this existence then i will have that definiteness in my interaction with them in my action with them so this whole um, purple unit or the self is the world of consciousness a unit of consciousness while the body is a unit which is a material unit and the two are very different their needs their activities their responses are very different uh, this i wanted to uh, say and now we can take questions regarding this mm, ma'am actually this is that dot which about which i asked last class and that is activity it is desire thought expectation and so many dots are there no yeah yeah it is continuing huh? they are going on those those are activities that are going on and what are the uh, for example when we run fast our heart beat rises no or when we um, uh, stand in uh, when we experience heat we sweat all these activities are controlled by what uh, self is it self activity now see if we look at the body first look, look at the body right now when you look at the body when you say heat so if you put the body in the sun the skin gets warm isn't it yes yes so this is recognition and fulfillment the body recognizes its relationship with the sun the sun you know the effect on the body is it warms the body this will always be in a very definite manner never will it happen that you know you place the body in the sun and the body doesn't get warm this effect you know of one unit on another this recognition and fulfillment this is definite in the body yeah now if the self gives instruction to the body to act a certain way so the self gives the instruction to the body to run the body doesn't run on its own right now the self is involved so the self is instructing the body to run when the body run you know when that action is happening now this you know there are some things that will happen in the body as part of its own self organization so this you know when we are running the heart beat increases the blood circulation increases this you are not giving any specific instruction to the body for that isn't it it's happening in the body by its own self organization you are not specifically saying now the blood must increase now the heart rate must increase right so you can see that as a response this happens in the body the recognition and fulfillment is that it is definite that this will always happen so if somebody is running fast then the heart beat increases now if you look at 
Mm -hmm. Say when you have, when you are anxious. No? Have you noticed sometimes that when you are anxious, your heartbeat increases? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, 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 who controls it? That's what I'm coming to that. So if I am going to be anxious, right? Now this anxiety in me has some impact on the body because every unit is being reflected onto every other unit. So the anxiety is in myself. It's not in the body. But the impact on the body will be, again, heartbeat may increase and many other things may happen in the body. So the body's recognition and fulfillment is definite. What is what can be changed is my feeling. That is in my control. That is up to me. There I have full control, 100% control. So if I have the right feeling, then this rapid heartbeat settles down, comes back to normal. Body comes back in harmony. So when I am in harmony, when my feelings are in line with my natural acceptance. When I am in harmony, then I don't disrupt the harmony in the body. The body has a natural, you know, self-organization by which it tends to be in harmony. But if I have some, you know, I may have assumed something about the reality and based on that assumption, for example, if I get anxious, then it will have that impact on the body. The body doesn't have any choice to say, okay, now I don't feel like raising the heartbeat with this, so I'll not do it. Body doesn't have choice in the matter, but I have the choice. I can see that this is happening and it's happening because of the disharmony in me. So if I can correct my disharmony, then it will stop creating disharmony in the body also. Can you see that? Uh, I think we should not try to regulate the behavior of other because in power, the definition of power itself is that uh, it is the ability to regulate the behavior of other and it leads to unnecessary domination and uh, feeling of opposition. But if we have the right feelings or say feeling of love towards all, that way we are able to better uh, say, uh, help the others in changing their behavior. So we should understand that we cannot uh, regulate or change the behavior of others. Rather, we should watch our own behavior. And that way, I think it is more powerful rather than trying to uh, dominate the others. And no. uh, regarding... Yes. Yes, please continue. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So there are different sources of power. And uh, say we have sometimes the positional power, sometimes we have formal power, sometimes we have power of expertise or knowledge power. So different types of powers are uh, there in say management or organizational behavior. So if we realize the power uh, that uh, it is the ability to dominate or say regulate or change the behavior of others, then uh, that is not the aim. And that way we cannot uh, change the behavior of others. Uh, and secondly, uh, regarding say dependence of others, I would like to give one uh, narrate one incidence. Uh, one of our principals always asked me for copies of bylaws. I always thought that why this person is so uh, incompetent and every time I am uh, he is uh, demanding knowledge from me when I have given him dozens of times. But later I understood that he is so much dependent on me and he considers that being legal advisor, it is my duty to keep that copy. And he, he has feeling of affection that whenever he asks for it, uh, I would be ready with that. And I should be, uh, if he has that expectation from me, then uh, it is simple work for me. And if uh, his work elements are not organized or maybe he has some other priorities, so he is dependent on me and uh, I should try to fulfill the dependence rather than uh, say, trying to think that uh, he is messed up or he does not have competence or he is not able to organize the files or like that. Because if someone is dependent and he expect uh, being, uh, because I, I was his subordinate and uh, he had some expectation from me. So whatever he expects, 
uh, i should do that uh, again and again and that should not be a problem for me if it is uh, not involving much effort on my part so that way yeah. uh, rather than changing the behavior of others if we adjust to their expectation sometimes it could be a better way to say uh, avoid the opposition the unnecessary opposition with others thank you i just like to mention here a couple of things one is you know when we are saying power we may have assumed something to be power but is it really power that is one question mark that you can you know we can see today we may be saying something is power when we dominate over somebody that is power but is it really power because within me i am unhappy so you know that is one question mark the other thing i wanted to mention was that we are not saying that we make the other person dependent on us and we are not saying also that um we should give in to all the expectations of the other rather we rightly evaluate ourselves we rightly evaluate the other we see where he is lacking in competence and if i have more competence in the matter then i try to help him with his competence which is a little bit different from making him dependent on me rather i will help him so that he can be he can increase his competence and similarly yes. if he has the wrong expectations i don't necessarily have to give in to all his expectations rather with the right feeling i will try to help him understand things better this one thing that i just wanted to mention yes yes yes, yes. yes. so thank